We're now in a position, I think, where we can actually integrate this with another service or another application. Just going to do a couple of little bits of editing and tidy up before I do that. Uh, this responds here, so I'm going to comment that out for now. And then we're going to go back to returning our JSON response. So return new JSON response, if it finds it for me. New JSON response, which comes from Symfony Component HTTP Foundation. And so our arguments are, first of all, we need the data, which is our response content. Next will be our status code. So response HTTP OK. Next is headers, but I don't want to set any headers, but I do want to set this JSON bool flag to true, meaning that our response content is already in JSON format. So because I don't want to use the headers there, what I'm gonna do is actually uh, make these named arguments. So the first one is data, the next one is status, and then this last one is JSON, which will set to true. So we'll just go back and have a look at this class here, the constructor. And so as you can see there, uh, bool JSON if the data is already a JSON string, which means I can get rid of that one. And then we'll just go over to Postman and run it again. So let's fire this off. Okay, and so we get our data back, everything's still working okay. It's in JSON format, perfect. Now let's go back to our service and in our product class we've got a load of stuff which I commented out here so I'll just uh, tidy some of this stuff up uh, by the way if you've seen other areas where you think things could be tidied up or I'm um, using getters and setters which I ain't using anything like that then uh, feel free to send me a pull request or just mention it to me and we can uh, sort it out together bit of teamwork I'll just check a couple of other files in my price modifier factory, I don't need a comment here to tell me what I'm doing. I'll usually use comments to explain why, may explain the decision why I've done something, but just to explain what's happening, you should be able to write code which is fairly self-explanatory. So I'll try and remove all kinds of comments like that. I left them in here maybe to help yourself uh, throughout the recordings, but we don't need them anymore. Uh, date range multiplier here when we were figuring out our maths and our logic, we don't need that there. Uh, event items multiplier, load of mess in here, just uh, get rid of it all, we don't need it, it's fairly self-explanatory what's going on. Uh, DTO serializer, there's one there, service exception looks okay, service exception data looks okay. Okay, I think we're good. One last step will be to run the tests, Fando bin PHP unit tests. Okay, seven tests, 10 assertions. One of them ran a little slow there, so I'll probably investigate that behind the scenes. For now, we can move over to a little service which I created, which will interact with this one. So let me talk you through this. I've created a little marketing um, front-end service. Uh, most of this is actually just dummy markup, which I got from Bootstrap. Uh, the dynamic parts are the product name, a bit of a product description there, and this part here. So this is what, is being driven by what comes back from the promotions engine. Let's go and have a look at some code. I've created literally uh, three files and I've added one entry to a config file, which I'll show you. So we have a product entity. I've kept it very simple. It has an ID, it has a name, it has a description, and then the all important part for communicating with the promotions engine is, is the product ID, which we have here. And then it's just a bunch of getters and setters. Let's go over to the products controller. And so I basically kept all my logic in the controller because I just wanted to knock something together quickly here. Uh, let me talk you through what this does. So first of all, it takes some query parameters in order to get all the information it needs. Let's go back to the browser and see what those are. And so um, those are quantity, uh, which I've set to five, and request location, which is UK. And then the uh, the number there, that is the ID of the product in this front end services database, which is a different database to our promotions engine. I'll show you that shortly. Okay, so it grabs the query parameters because it's going to need those. And then it gets a product from a database using the ID. So the ID which you see there in our URL. 
Next to this whole block which you see here, this is the request which is being made to the Promotions engine. And so I'm using Symfony's HTTP client to do this. We're making a post request. This is the URL. I'll explain where this part comes from in a second. But as you can see, it's going to products uh, using the product ID and then the lowest price endpoint. Absolutely nothing new there. That's exactly what you see here. Products, product ID, lowest price endpoint. And then we set the body. And so you can do that using uh, this JSON key here. And so we're setting the quantity. If there isn't a quantity, we're actually setting it to one. So a little bit of safety sort of built into the design there. And then we have the rest of the stuff, request location, voucher code, request date, and the product ID, which is all the information which the promotions engine needs. And then we check to see if there is a successful response. And if there is, it will uh, change the promotion data, which it uh, gets back here. This is the um, response and if there is it will convert the response body to an array that gets stored in promotion data and then that can be accessed on our front end which I'll show you in a second and so there we're passing through the product which is the product which was queried from this front end services database and then the promotion data which has come back from the promotions engine and so we're rendering a front end file here show HTML Dot twig. Okay, so uh, this is a bit of a mess. There's quite a lot of stuff here. We've, I've just grabbed this from uh, a bootstrap template on get bootstrap. But all of this I will push up uh, to GitHub and I'll leave a link below the video so you can go and grab this because I'm sure you don't actually want to be um, doing all this yourself just to be able to demonstrate it. And so the two little bits at the top here, product name and product description, that is what you see here. And then if we come a bit further down, I'm checking to see if there is a promotion. And so we check a little bit of logic. First off, we're checking here if we're getting a 200 response back. If so, all is good. We can send things back as they are. Otherwise, I'm actually setting the promotion to null. So you can probably think of a better way to do this and a better way to handle errors in general. Uh, what I would also do is put some logging in here uh, if I was going to do it this way, just to let the owner of this service know that um, you're trying to get this promotion back from the promotions engine, but it doesn't actually have one for the request you're making. I'd maybe log some info like that to a log. Uh, but like I say, so if things haven't gone well, there isn't a promotion. Just we return a product for the product key and null for the promotion. And so that's what we're checking for here. If there is a promotion, all's good, we can display it. And so uh, I think there was just one little piece of information which I displayed about it, which was the discounted price. And that is what you are seeing right there. Okay, and so if a promotion isn't found, what happens is that this panel will not be displayed at all. So let's actually demonstrate that first. I'll go and put in uh, product number two. Now there is a product number two in my database. However, let me quickly show you my database. Uh, that is this one here, Acme Radio Knobs, but it's a product ID of 66. The important thing here is that that number 66 is what gets sent to the promotions engine. And I know that in my promotions engine database, there isn't a, uh, a reference for a product with an ID of 66. And so in that case, we should get uh, an error um, response sent back from the promotions engine. And so let's go and try this. Okay, so we got an error response and that means that we don't actually show a promotion because we don't have a promotion to show. Okay, a little discussion around this approach. This was just knocked up just to show you some integration between two different services, a front-end service and a back-end service. Um, so in real life, would I design it like this? No, probably not. I'd probably do something more asynchronous so that it's going to load the page and then maybe make the call behind the scenes to the promotions engine and just um, populate the data once it comes back after doing that call. Otherwise, your users might end up hanging there waiting for that response to go to promotions engine. There is one other thing which I said that I would show you if we go to our product controller. So this bit here, this promotions engine URL, which is a property on our controller. 
I've set this in the constructor, but you're probably looking at this thinking, well, where does the actual value come from for this? Let me show you that. So if we go to config, so this is in uh, config, and then services.yaml, if we have a look here, so underneath the keys, services, default, bind, I then uh, binded a variable. So if you do this, it means that you'll be able to inject a variable called promotions engine URL through your constructors and also in your methods, I think, in uh, controllers. And then that is set to this value here, which I set just above where I define my services underneath parameters. So promotions engine URL, and then I've just set it to uh, the promotions engine URL, which was given when I set up a development server. And so I have my promotions engine running on just a development server at this address. And then for this promotions client uh, service thing that you're looking at here, a uh, slightly different address, the port is 8001 instead of 8000. Because I started my promotions engine server running before I started this one running. And so it gave this one the very next port number in sequence. And so that concludes things. Like I say, uh, I'll put this code on GitHub so you can pull it and then integrate it with your own. Have a little play around with it. If you do get stuck with anything, then leave me a comment uh, underneath the video. And just from me personally, I'd like to say well done for making it to the end. Thank you very much. The people that make it to the end of these courses are the people that I make these courses for primarily. Uh, some people complained about the course because I didn't include all the latest, greatest, sexiest stuff like CQRS and things like that. However, we did cover a lot of stuff uh, in Symfony. We looked at caching, exception listeners, uh, all kinds of different things which you may or may not have touched on before. Um, we even touched on some good PHP stuff like solid principles uh, and some design pattern stuff. So all in all, I think if you made it this far, you've probably learned quite a lot. And I've actually learned quite a lot from the comments that I've received from the people on the videos and people uh, suggesting that I do things maybe in a different way. And that's been really uh, eye opening and helpful to me also. It's been one of my favorite courses to make so far, and there's definitely more stuff coming your way soon, so I'll see you in the next one. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. And also, if you're interested in my full-length courses, then make sure you check out my site at garyclark.tech. I'll leave a link on the screen and in the description.